Of course, people weren't satisfied with no Michael Myers, so we get this. I think one of the big problems with specifically the fourth one is what the fuck is... I mean, you've got several dream sequence... I mean, that's... On, on the entire scale of cheap scares, that's like breaking through the lower part of it and just creating an entirely new... That's fucking cheap. That is... What the fuck is going on at the cafe? Is he seeing Michael Myers? Is he seeing things? Is is Michael Myers... Is Michael Myers there or not? Can someone answer that? Can someone for sure answer that? Because he seems to be certain that Michael Myers is there, and it's more than one shot that he's there. He raises the gun, he fires, he hits fuck all, and then Michael Myers is driving out of the cafe. What the fuck? Did he teleport? Was he not there? What is that? Why did... Why did Loomis see him there if he wasn't really standing there? Clearly he was there, and and I love how later he um, uh, bitches about, Oh, there was an explosion after... Yeah, the old fart, you did that. You were kind of the guy who shot and made the explosion happen, you know. So the characters are yet again obnoxious. I mean, I don't mean to be insensitive, but Jamie... There are several ways to be an orphaned kid, and what the way you are it is obnoxious. Seriously, the first time we see her, she's just whining. Why is my mother gone? Oh, you're so lucky you have a mother. Shut the fuck up. We get it. You're sad. Put away the fucking violins, okay? We pity you. You've you've lost your mother, okay? That sucks. You don't have to go on and on about it. Later, she does get to be a little more, you know, a little more likable. <laughs> but also with Rachel, the very first thing is her bitching about having to take care of her little kid. And the boyfriend? What? A so again, we're just waiting for these people to die. Also, in the first one, it was, you know, really disturbing when you hear, you know, oh, there's a, there's a dead dog here, he got hungry. And then, a little later, he, uh, he kills that other dog um, uh, at the, um, the kid's house, where the other one is uh, there to babysit uh, the girl. And now he's just kind of leaving a trail of dead dogs, which is kind of stupid. And Loomis is, yet again... YELLING HALF HIS LINES! DON'T YOU UNDERSTAND? HE'S PURE EVIL! And because studios are terrified of something that is even a little bit different from what has worked before, well, worked recently anyway, we're stuck with the stupid fucking reason for why he killed. So now he, he's returning because, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis said, fuck this shit, I'm not appearing in anymore. And they kill her off, off screen, without, it just, you know, she's dead, and oh, and she had a kid, uh, because it's now been ten years since the first one, so she has, like, uh, there's this seven-year, eight-year-old called Jamie, and, and again, now it's just, we're, we're stuck with this shit about how Michael is apparently killing female relatives who are you know, either his sisters or his sister's daughters. Think about how fucking stupid that is. Jason kills people who are similar to, you know, who, who are doing shit that, you know, that uh, initially um, meant that he wasn't safe from the drowning, you know, with people who have premarital sex, people who smoke pot. Freddy kills to take revenge because he, you know, he was like a child killer before or something, I think. Hand wants them. And he's now taking revenge by killing the kids in their dreams where the parents can't protect them. Michael Myers kills female siblings and their relatives. Stupid. We get more POV shots so we know exactly where Michael is, exactly what he's doing. I think it might also be this one where he, like, 
tries to hide out in fucking daylight in the middle of just... And it just does not hold up at all. We don't give a shit about any of these characters. We don't really want them to live. We're largely just cheering for Michael. And this, I also think, is the first one where kind of people think they see him, but he's not really... No, Jamie sees him there in the, the toy store for another cheap scare that does not pay off. It's so fucking lame. And that kind of continues. And now we get fucking Hicks and a lynch mob. Why did they have to go there? They... they very carefully avoided that in the first one with, you know, the line. I mean, it's like they went through the first one and just said, okay, what has already been done in sequels? Oh, they mentioned that if people find out there's a guy, they'll be seeing him everywhere. Let's just snatch that, put it in our fucking movie. And it's stupid as shit. Okay, so, you know, they kill one guy who apparently who wasn't really Michael Myers. And why is Loomis cheering them on anyway? Oh, you no longer have a police force. <sighs> and then near the end, Michael Myers fucking teleports onto the hick truck. I mean, don't even try to tell me that he was, like, hiding underneath it, um, fucking Cape Fear style. That's bullshit. How did he... What, they left the truck unattended for long enough that he could find it, determined that's the one they're going to be driving on, crawled up under it, and then, at the exact right time, on the fucking highway. If he could hide down there, why didn't he kill them before they started driving? Especially if he can't be killed by guns. And it's already been pretty much established he can't. The ending is actually a decent enough idea. The execution isn't perfect, but it's... I mean, you know, Jamie follows in... Uncle's footsteps and kills her her stepmother anyway. That's a little potentially interesting. However, this fucks that over. So now she's just apparently fucking psychic, and they completely abandon the. It's, I mean, they like mention oh she attacked her uh, stepmother, but. Apparently she survived, I'm not sure, I don't care. This is probably also the one that has the most obnoxious character out of any of these films, Tina. Wendy Kaplan, you hate her from the very first... And, and the fucking thing is, the horrible thing is, she just keeps being there, she doesn't... I think she is, like, killed near the end, but I'm not sure it's really completely confirmed. She was, like, stabbed once, and then we don't really see her anymore. The, the car sequence, why does he stop? Why, you know, and, and how fucking convenient is that goddamn psychic connection? She just sees it when it would help. Um, it's just god-awful. Why does he stop? Why does he let her out of the car? Why doesn't he... She's right there. No one can stop him from killing her. Why doesn't he do it? I will say... The, the, um, the thing about, I mean, as fucking convenient as it is that she now can't talk, the mute thing is, you know, that does kind of make sense as someone who's, um, you know, post-traumatic and she acts it really well. I will say Daniel Harris was a very good actor, even back then. Haven't seen as much of her new stuff. She grew up to be really hot, too, but moving on. She does it really well. It is not easy to pretend to be a mute because the, your voice is one of the best acting forces that you have. And to not at all, you know... And then there's, there's also this other kid who also seems to have some sort of speech impediment. He's also fantastic. Um, and I would say you actually don't... You know, the, the kids in this aren't irritating. Impressive, that's, you know, and, and you do somewhat sort of care for them.